years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on The Thing 2011. It was released on October 14, 2011. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No. What year is it? I haven't actually seen this prequel yet. I just kind of avoided it because I heard that it was rumored by CGI shit and all that stuff. And I've already seen Carpenter's version, so there's really no reason for me to watch it. But it's on its 10th anniversary, so it's like, okay, perfect time to watch it. And I think it's good, you know? Like, it's essentially, I don't know if this is an issue, but it's something that I noticed. It's essentially the same movie from Carpenter's version, but just with CGI and a different base. The helicopter shot from the original starts, essentially. And I like it. It's good. It's a really good segue to watch this version and then go into the 1982 version. One thing I've always liked about both films is the snow setting. Someone who grew up not knowing snow or just never experiencing snow, I've always had this weird, not weird, but this fascination of living in snow. So any setting or any movie that that's set in snow, pretty much just a door, just based off that setting. There's still a paranoia experience in this film where all the characters, once they find out what's going on, there's this weird alien thing and this big ice tub thing. One by one, each of them die, but then they have to figure out who is the thing. So mostly in the second half, everyone's trying to figure out who's who and whatnot and then i guess our main protagonist the main girl whose actress name is kate weinstein or something like that hold on mira elizabeth weinstein but the character's name is kate so i'm just gonna call her kate she's a really good lead obviously not as good as kurt russell because you know he has that beard and whatnot but i like her she's the one to figure out about the whole inorganic objects how the thing can't recreate that and then she figures out that carter is indeed one of the things that's good on her part showing her as a character her being way ahead of all the other characters thinking like three steps ahead they still have the whole breathing thing and like the whole blood thing they test out each other's blood and so all of it's kind of the same as okay you know what this is good but it's essentially the same movie as Carpenter's ruins it at least everyone watching this film is the CG and I think there was supposed to be practical effect there was on set and maybe just like a little bit of CG in there but then I think the studio which I don't know who it was I think Universal studio was like hey you know what guess what we're gonna switch it erase all that footage and put it in CGI and it takes you out of the film so while these look cool it's like okay yeah this is clearly CG there's some practical effects here but but it's all been scrapped for CG. I don't know why they made that decision. It's really dumb. It would have made the film a lot more better. It would have been the same as 1982, but it would have been a better film. And then the characters themselves, like this goes for the 1982 version as well, where I don't really care about them. Aside from the main lead, they are expendable in a way. Like you like them, you know, but it's also like, can't wait to see them get ripped apart or be killed by a human or even the thing. That's what I'm waiting for. So at a certain point where it's like, okay, you know what, just get to the killing, you know, the slow burn of like build up and paranoia as well. But you're essentially waiting for them to get killed off and then i do like the fact that they do leave kate's character left pretty unknown whether she survives or not leaving audiences to think about what happened to her i'm just gonna assume that she died because to that thing inside that dog you know maybe she got consumed by it or got killed by it off screen because i don't see her surviving and there's no elements and then try to survive this thing as well i just don't see it we could have saw this character in carpenter's version but we didn't there's no mention of her at all so unless i missed that which there's a chance i'm gonna assume that she's dead she's killed off screen she survived the movie but she died because there's no way she could survive any of that and i think she's only like the sole survivor as well so that makes it kind of hard to survive i mean unless she already calls like for backup which there is backup which leads into the whole carpenter version but i just don't see it happening at all and then you got the whole helicopter coming down they see a dog coming out and then they're trying to shoot it which leads to the 1982 version perfectly because that's how that movie starts as well i think there's a video on youtube that cuts into the prequel and then 1982 version together so that it could just blend well so the 2011 prequel still good it still holds up there is that cg issue which i don't know again still confused and dumbfounded on why that was made or whatever and then the film being essentially the same movie as 82 i don't know man the more i think about it the more i think it becomes an issue it's like why are you even make the prequel if you're gonna make it the same i mean these are events that happened beforehand but it's essentially the same movie but just in like the russian boot camp thing or whatever i don't know how i feel about that but either way the thing prequel is still good all the cg because well hold on you can't ignore all of that but if you look past that it's a good film just ruined by cgi And then the 1982 John Carpenter's The Thing. I don't know what else to say about this film. There's a bunch of YouTube videos already talking about how great this film is. So I don't know what to add, honestly. But I'm just gonna add this on because, you know, it's a prequel. It leads into this version. But this is a great film. Like everyone says, probably one of Carpenter's best films to date because, well, first of all, Kurt Russell, he just looks great. That beard and everything and the stone elements, he just looks good, all right? And then Paranoia, like always, the whole blood thing. But mainly the practical effect, they are great. The whole hand thing, the whole like sharp 
warp teeth and how he's gonna go and help this guy the whole biting off the whole thing was amazing how he turns into the whole head thing that you see in those trailers or whatever it has the whole same breathing thing the whole blood thing and again go back to 2011 it's the same movie but this version is just a lot more better kind of have no reason to go back and watch the prequel group of characters they go through the russian base find the whole ice cube tub thing they find the dog they get rid of the helicopter thinking that they saved this poor dog turns out to be the thing it kills all those dogs leads into chaos leads into flamethrowers leads into blood tests and the having one of them be closed off in a shed is it a shed somewhere off between the group but turns out he's like a thing as well kurt russell is just a really good lead like his presence alone is just really good and this is no disrespect to kate there but kurt russell this is back in his prime when he was young and just again that beard lovely beard like he just has that screen presence when you see him on screen it's like okay i want to follow this guy and it's great he's great in it that's kind of what makes the movie great as well with the whole practical and all that stuff and just like the prequel they leave the ending unknown and how feet of kurt russell and his friend who's breathing but can't see the whole breath or whatever who's clearly a thing or at least i think it is leaving it unknown not knowing whether they survive or not not knowing whether they even leave that whole thing and that's where it should be left off there should be no more remix no more sequels to this just leave it as it is from the looks of it and as of recording this there looks to be no the thing series or the thing movie or the thing remake or sequel so that's good it's like the one thing is just don't touch it it's good as it is prequel isn't even that bad it's just the whole cg stuff is all really awful but john carpenter's 1982 the thing is great like i said earlier i don't know what else to add to this conversation because so many videos so many people already talked about this movie how great it is it is still great to this day and maybe carpenter's best films you know or i don't know some other movie actually you know what this makes me want to go watch carpenter's filmography i've only seen halloween and the thing i need to go watch his other stuff <laughs> So that was it for years later for the thing, which is episode number something. I don't keep track if you guys haven't noticed. I just kind of do things on the fly and hopefully I just do what is necessary to make the video good. If you guys couldn't tell, but either way, I'm really excited to do this because I haven't seen the prequel yet. So I'm glad I did. It's not as bad, but it's ruined by all that stuff. And I would actually recommend people watch that film, the 2011 version. It's a perfect segue into 1982. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching.